friends, this is Julie Golding Page, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, Canada, along the Scudic or St. Croix River, the traditional territory of the Beskudumukadi or Passamaquoddy. And I'm very grateful that they share this beautiful place with us. I'm also grateful that you've come to join me here today, so thank you so much. Uh, a little bit about me, I share my life with my husband of 28, almost 29 years, our 11-year-old daughter, a very precocious mini schnauzer, and several enthusiastic fancy goldfish. And so today I'm going to be demonstrating a project for you. And I found another punch like last week that is on the clearance rack. And so I wanted to show that card to you. I've just had a lot of fun using these punches. They originally came out with stamp sets as well that you can't get anymore because they're retired. But um, the punches are a real bargain and they can be used with all kinds of current products as well. So let me just flip over my phone and we'll get started with today's project. Okay. All right, I just got to set it up here. Make sure you can see my screen and everything. Okay, that looks pretty good. So here is the project we're going to be using today. And it says life is sweeter with you. So the project is going to be using this ice cream builder punch, ice cream cone builder punch, properly said. So we're going to get to that shortly. But I wanted to tell you uh, how to find me on the internet first, in case you want the instructions for this project later. I'll have them posted right here in this post uh, under the replay. But also you can find me anytime online if you want to order something or you want to look at all the projects that I have put on my website, you can find me at www.juliescraftattic.com. Oops, I think I put that too high up, didn't I? Okay, so julie'scraftattic.com. So that's where you can find me online. And the host code for this month, which will net you a card of the month from me and also a tutorial bundle featuring the rain or shine suite. So it's really super cute. Um, the host code that you need to use in your order is YZFVA3SE. And if you don't know how to use that, no problem at all. I will post a shopping link uh, with this replay right in the post, and I will have this code embedded right in it for you, so you don't even have to enter it separately. Okay? But if you have any questions about how to order or anything you find on my website, please just let me know, and I will be happy to help you out. Um, I really enjoy customer service. Um, to me, it's a way of uh, helping to look after people and I see my customers as friends as well. So I'm really happy to uh, engage with you if you have any questions. Okay, so some upcoming classes that I have. The first one is a simple stamping class. So here is a preview of one of the cards. So you can see here, it's a nice birthday card and it's just got some paper on and a bow few embellishments and so the cards are all going to be simple stamping like that there will be three of them and here is the bundle we're going to be using so this is the stamp set something fancy that we're going to be using this is a great one if you're looking for a stamp set that has a number of sentiments and they're good for all kinds of different occasions year-round everything from encouragement you matter to so many to sympathy to birthday this is actually a belated birthday one, so that's a good one. A thank you. There's a happy birthday. Congratulations. This one is just um, you're grateful for someone in general. Um, this one is love. This one's interesting. May the good you do come back to you. And this one, here's to beautiful beginnings and happily ever after. So all kinds of different occasions that you might use this for. You can also use uh, whatever stamp set you would like. So all my classes are online and I do specify a stamp set or a bundle for all of them, but you're free to use any stamp set that you want. And what I do is I cut all the pieces for you and um, send them to you in the mail. 
and then you do the class online with me at a given time or you can watch the replay later and I send tutorials as well. And here is the other part of the bundle. So this has really been a useful piece. I like this a lot. So these are called the Something Fancy Dies. And as you can see, there's all kinds of really helpful labels. So I've been using them quite a bit, uh, not always with these sentiments, but with all kinds of other sentiments as well. They're just really nice ones. Okay, so that is the simple stamping class that's coming up. And it also includes a $20 uh, product goodie bag. So you get that as well as all the pieces that are cut. The next class is one that you, you can take as a club option or just as a one-off class. You don't have to be part of the club. Again, it's online as all my classes are online. So anyone across Canada can take them. And here is one of the sneak peeks from that class. So aren't these little rhinos super cute? I thought they were so cute. So it uses the Rhino Ready stamp set. You can see all the rhinos and you got little birds and, and all kinds of things here. So it's very cute. And the dies are really nice that go with it as well. So I like these because you can cut out all the rhinos with these outlines, but you can also make these super cool trees. And I think the trees look really nice. I've seen some things people have done with them on the internet and they're very, very interesting. So I think you could use them outside the Rhino Ready stamp set as well. And as with all my classes, again, um, I have assigned this Rhino Ready stamp set to be used with this online class, but you're free to use anything you want. So as you can see here, um, I'll, I will give you all of these pieces cut out, but then you have to stamp and cut out whatever you're going to put over here. So it could be a Rhino, or if you don't want to use the Rhino Ready stamp set, you can use whatever you have at home. And this particular class comes with a $25 product goodie bag. Okay, on top of all the cut pieces. Okay, so let's go on to today's project. So here we go. It's this one that says life is sweeter with you. And in case you missed the beginning, we're going to be using this ice cream cone builder punch, which is right now on the clearance rack, <clears throat> excuse me, for $14.40 Canadian. So that is a real bargain. That's really, really good. We might as well make our money go as far as we can, right? So I thought we'd use that one today. Okay, so to get started, let's do our die cutting first. So I'm going to die cut this scalloped rectangle very first. And I've got a piece cut here. So this is just basic white cardstock. And I'm gonna dig out my little mini machine. So here's the little mini machine. It's very simple. If you've never seen one of these before or never used one, you just fold down the plates and then you get the plates that come with it and they all have instructions. So if you're afraid you'll go wrong with it, please don't be uh, scared. You've got all the instructions right here. So you want to place the die cutting edge down. That's always good. They want plate number one, which is this one, and then two plates number two, and you sandwich the die and the paper between. So here's our plate number one. Here's a plate number two. You can see I've used this one quite a bit. And I suggest using the same plate number two on the bottom all the time, because as you can see, it gets cut. Uh, and all these cuts don't hurt the plate, but they can transfer to your image that you're die cutting if the plate is on top. So I try to use the cutting plate, the same cutting plate on the bottom, and then a relatively clear looking plate on the top. You can also get replacement ones if you need to, so no worries if you find yours just gets too cut up. And this particular die is just the right size to use in this mini machine. It's pretty much the maximum size you can use. And it comes from this set of dies. They're called the Scalloped Contours dies. And I have to say, I have used these a lot. So here, are all the scalloped rectangles. They also co coordinate with the stamp set, so you have these floral ones, but I've mostly used all these scalloped rectangles. And the only one that won't be used in the mini machine because it's too big is the largest one, but all the other rectangles will actually fit the mini machine. So it's a good set for the mini machine. There's just one die that you can't use, but all the rest are good. So let's see, I'm gonna get this one out. And you can see uh, this is the cutting edge. It's not sharp on your finger, 
but it's not smooth like the other side. So you know which side to put in. So we'll put that right on there. I'll put this one on top and we will run that through. And if you have a mini machine, a tip that I've seen that I think is helpful and that I use all the time as well is to stand while you're running it through the machine. Okay, so while you're putting your die cuts through the machine, stand because you kind of press down with one hand and crank with the other. There's no electricity or anything, so it's all just your arm kind of doing the job. And that means that it's great because you don't have any electronics to break or anything like that. So there's my piece for the bin. And here's what my lovely little scalloped rectangle looks like. So that's very nice. So I've got that piece. And we also need to die cut this piece here. So this is a black piece. So I have a piece of black paper. You just need a scrap. And I'm going to put that one in. And for that, we're going to use these dies. These are another set of dies I've used an awful lot. They're called Stylish Shapes dies. I'm just gonna move the machine so you can see them. So they come with all these nested squares and nested circles that you can use together or just separately. And then these labels as well. So there's all kinds of different things you can use in these ones. So what I'm gonna do is use this largest of the label ones. Here it is. And we're gonna put that in and crank it through. Okay. So here we go. Let's just sandwich that in there. And then that'll be all the die cutting that we need to do. And next we're gonna do a bit of stamping. And I did some embossing on this card too, because I liked using the black and the white kind of as a background. And it really makes the colors pop, I find. So that's why I decided to go with that. I'll put away the mini machine. And we've got our lovely little label here. So next we're going to go ahead and emboss on that. Stamp and emboss with heat. So let's get everything ready. What I'm gonna use is my little embossing buddy. And all this does is take any of the humidity that might be on our piece of paper. Now it's fairly dry here today, uh, but if this were midsummer, this would be even more important. Uh, or if you live in a humid location that's just humid all year, uh, perhaps like the Pacific coast or certain parts of the Atlantic coast too, uh, you wanna get all that humidity off because when you put the powder on to emboss, that powder will emboss on any place that there's humidity to stick to it. So you just wanna make sure that you get all of that off. All right, I'm gonna get my piece of scrap paper here. I'm gonna put that underneath and I'm gonna not touch that with my fingers to put humidity on there. And we are going to grab our stamp set and use our invisible ink called Versamark to stamp that on. Okay, I'm just moving my card out of the way because I don't want powder to end up on it. So here's the Versamark ink pad. And I'm going to get my stamp out. The stamp pad that, or the stamp pad, the stamp set that I'm using today rather, is this Share a Milkshake stamp set. So you can see it's got all kinds of fun things in it, but we're just gonna use the sentiment today. And I'm gonna use Life is Sweeter with You. So let's see what we can do with that. There's the stamp. I'm just gonna put it on my block. This is just a regular block out of a kit. And I'm going to get it inked up really well because I wanna make sure I've got enough ink on it that the powder is gonna stick on it really well, okay? And we are going to stamp kind of toward the right-hand side. So I'm just gonna move this up so I can see it a little better and stand right above it so I know if it's more or less straight. I find that's a helpful tip to just stand above your stamp, directly above it instead of stamping off to the side or out in front of you. If you're directly over top of it, you can more or less see what you're doing better. Okay, so that is very invisible. You can hardly see that. And now we are going to put the powder on and kind of reveal the magic here. So my powder 
if you get the basics embossing powders, I'm using just the white powder. And if you get those powders, I have to say they last for a very long time. I have never had to replace any color of embossing powder. So it might seem a bit of an investment at the beginning, and it is, but you'll have them for years and years. So it's not something that's going to go bad or not work anymore. There, so I'm just tapping it to get the powder off. And you can see there it is. The powder is all on there, it looks very good. And I'm gonna put the powder back in the jar now, and then we'll work the magic with our heat tool. So if you don't have an embossing heat tool, or Versamark ink or the embossing powders. You can do this card without embossing as well. But I did have them on hand and I just thought it added a nice little extra bit of interest to the card. So here we go. I'm just going to heat up my heat tool. I'm going to prime it for a few seconds and it's gonna get a bit loud. So my apologies for that. Here we go. working its magic. It is turning from powder to this nice white embossed. Okay, I'm going to flip it over do the other side because it is hot. Okay, I'm just going to eyeball that to see if we got all the pieces. I think we did though and I'll show you how it turned out. So if you've never embossed before with the heat tool, it's just like using a hair dryer. You just turn it on and off. It's very simple. Uh, you just keep your hands away from the heat, much like a hair dryer as well. And that's what it does. So it looks very nice. It just, whoops, gives you a little extra interest on your card. So let's take a look at our card again and we'll see what has to be done next. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and make the ice cream cone? And you can just barely see that underneath, but I've used a die to make this piece of crumb cake cardstock into an ice cream cone. So let's get our machine out again, our little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Here it is again. I'm gonna put the plates down and we're going to cut out the base of our cone. So once again, we start with a plate number one. We put a plate number two on the bottom and then we're gonna sandwich our paper and die between the two plates number two. So here's a piece of the crumb stock, or crumb cake rather, card stock. Ugh, getting my words all mixed up today. I must need to go to bed earlier. And then we're going to put our die in there. And I think I have to go grab my dies. It looks like I didn't bring them over. So just hang in there for a second, friends. And I will grab those have to be pretty close. Okay, here they are. So these dies go with the stamp set that we're using today called Share a Milkshake. And I really think they're so nice. Here is the cone. So it actually folds over into a waffle cone. And you've got ice cream dishes and spoons and you've got milkshake glasses and cherries, all kinds of cool stuff here that you can assemble milkshakes and uh, lovely decadent treats. But today we're just going to use this one die to make our cone. Now we could use our punch and just punch out a cone, but I had these dies and I thought I think we'll use this and make a really fancy cone. I don't know about you, but my favorite kind of cone is the waffle cone. I just love them. And my apologies if anybody's making any comments here today. I, For some reason I can't see them on my phone. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't, and I guess today's one of those sometimes you can't days. Okay, so there we go. And here is our lovely cone. So I'll show you how you assemble this little cone because it's pretty cool. So you can see there, there are score lines built right into the die and all this hatching is there as well. Um, to make it look like a cone. So we just fold on the two score lines. And then this side goes in first. 
and then this one. You can tell because if you try this one first, this one won't fold over. So it's pretty easy to tell which one's first. So we're going to just secure those with a little bit of the stamp and seal. And then we will punch out our ice cream bits as well. Okay, so isn't that a cute little cone? I think that's so neat. I really like that one. Okay, so now we're gonna use our star of the show here, our ice cream cone builder punch, and we're going to punch out three bits of ice cream. So you can see here, they're kind of sparkly, and I did the blue, the pink, and the green. And those are actually part of this set of paper. So this is 2022 to 2024 in color glimmer paper. So you get all five of the in colors uh, in it. And so we're using Parakeet Party, which is green. We're using Sweet Sorbet, which is kind of that pinkish. And Tahitian Tide, which is the blue. So it comes with all these beautiful colors. And I'll just show you what the other ones look like because they're so lovely. So here are some of the full sheets. And they have this ombre effect. So they start light at one end and get darker at the other. So it gives you all kinds of flexibility and versatility when you're crafting. And they're just beautiful. I love these because they're glitter papers, but the glitter doesn't come off. How nice is that? So no glitter storm in your house. I really like that paper. Uh, since we have a new catalog coming out soon in May, um, Things from the old catalog are going to start selling out. In fact, they have already. I noticed there's a few items already gone for good. So if you're interested in the paper or anything that you see here today, uh, it may not be available anymore. Most things, um, I think, in terms of paper and in terms of even some of the colors are going to be retiring. These in colors are going to be around for another year, but we're having a whole big color refresh this year. So we're just waiting to see what the new colors will be and which colors are going away. So out of the 50 colors that we have, how many will be staying? We don't know, but it's going to be really fun to find out. Okay, so I'm going to do a pink one here. So that's Sweet Sorbet, which is very apropos for an ice cream. And this one is called Tahitian Tide. So we're just going to punch that out. And that's all we need our little punch for. So again, this is called the Ice Cream Cone Builder Punch. It's in the clearance rack, or at least it was last time I checked, which wasn't very long ago. And it was $14.40, which is a real steal. Uh, they're way up in the high 20s uh, at this point as a normal price. So it's a really nice punch. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically assemble the card now to go exactly like this one. So the first thing that I did then to assemble was actually to fold my card base. So I'm just going to grab that now. So for my card base, what I used was basic white thick cardstock. And I used the thick for my uh, card bases because it is a little thicker than the regular basic white cardstock. The basic white cardstock is just perfect for stamping. Gives you a really clear image because it is so smooth. Um, but it's not as heavy weight as this. And if you want a card to stand up, especially if you're layering up several things on it, like this one, uh, then this just gives it a little extra body so it's stronger for you. Okay, so there's my card base. And now we have this really nice checkerboard paper. And this is a case of using something that was not at all thought of to be used with scalloped rectangles or ice cream cones. And let me tell you why. This paper is from the Ready to Ride paper. And that's part of a suite that has a whole bunch of motorcycles and all kinds of things like that. Let me just show you the different papers and you'll see what I mean. So you wouldn't normally think of it in terms of ice cream cones and little scalloped things. Uh, but here are the patterns. So this is the one we've got today. But look at the back. 
it's got all of this very kind of masculine looking stuff on it, right? Typically, anyway, I know women can use all these same tools and uh, I'm somebody that likes to build things too, uh, furniture and stuff. If, if we get it from Ikea, I like to build it. Um, but they've got the colors kind of more toward guys. So that's the paper on the back of what we're using today. They have this almost goth looking black and gray rose paper and it's got road signs on the back. So that's cool. I kind of like that. This one, we've got tire tracks and on the back, it looks almost, I don't know, kind of like wrenches and screws and that sort of thing come to mind when I see that pattern. And speaking of wrenches, <laughs> Here you go, it's got wrenches all over it. I really like this particular pattern. I think this is super cute. Um, we really like traveling and hiking in the desert and um, this one just really appeals to me. Then we've got this one. It could be like little bolts or rivets or whatever. And on the back, you've got all these kind of mini cards that you can cut out and use really as the centerpiece of any of your cards and make it really simple. And then we've got this one. So this is kind of nice, almost a star pattern. And it's got all these motorbikes on the back. So you can see this particular suite of paper is not one that you'd normally think of to use with ice cream cones, but I thought it was just the thing uh, to have black and white to set off all our beautiful colors today. So I'm going to use my stamp and seal here, and I'm just going to attach this paper to the card. And if you're interested in any of these supplies, um, I will have a full supply list and all the instructions, including measurements for this card, available later today by about 1 p.m. Atlantic. And um, also I'd be delighted to help you with your order if you don't already have a demonstrator. Um, I'd be very happy to help you and I'll have my shopping link and the link to my website, which is juliescraftaddict.com and um, all of the different special offers available here as well. Okay, so we've got that done. So now it's time to assemble the rest of the card. So let's move this out of the way a little bit and we're going to take our scalloped rectangle and we are going to assemble our ice cream cone. So I'm just going to make the same kind of cone I did before. And what I did was just kind of eyeballed it to see where I wanted it on my little waffle cone. And then you see those little pieces? I just cut, cut them off with my scissors, just a little snip. So let's just cut that off in the background. And we'll do that on this side too. And now it's perfect. So you can see it would look really weird without that ice cream on, but nobody will see that, so it won't matter. Okay, so what we'll do is we will put a little bit of stamp and seal on there. Oops, got to get it running here first. And we will adhere that. Okay. And then we will do the same for the next ones. So I'll just kind of adhere that on top of the other one. So we'll get our stamp and seal on there again. And you could also use glue dots or whatever you'd like for glue. I'm not sure about the multi-purpose liquid glue though. I'm not sure how well that would stick to these um, glitter papers really, but you could try it if you wanted. You just might need to leave it for a while so it dries thoroughly. So let's put that on there. Okay, so now we have our ice cream and we can see it fits on there, so that's good. This one's a little crooked, so we'll move it over a little. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and stick that onto our paper. So all I'm going to do to stick that on actually is use some stamp and seal as well. You can use whatever adhesive you would prefer. Some people like the liquid glue better. Um, I just like the tape glue the best. It doesn't need a lot of adhesive and it will just stick on very nicely for you. So I'm just standing directly above the ice cream cone so I can kind of see where I'm putting it. There we go. Now next we're going to take our label and we are going to put that on as well. But I think, actually before I do that, I think I'll put this right onto the card. We'll use some stamp and dimensionals and then we'll know exactly where we want our label to be. 
So let's do that. And just need to get the backing off there. There we go. So there's two. And I'm just going to use all these little pieces on the edges of the Stampin' Dimensionals. You might as well use every little bit of them and get your money's worth. Why not? So I always like to use all those little pieces along the edges. They stick just as well as the ones in the middle. And sometimes they're actually really helpful because you can use the little pieces on smaller items. So even if you have the mini Stampin' Dimensionals as well, these ones I find are useful, the little pieces. Okay, so let's line that up. Try to be a little bit even with it here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's see where we want our label to go. So I think we want it to go off one edge, kind of to more, toward the right a little bit more. I like it a little bit off center, but if you like everything centered, feel free to do the whole card centered. You could have the ice cream coat centered as well, but I like it just slightly off. I find that gives it a little more interest for me anyway. Okay, so let's use some of these dimensionals. And I think a couple should do the job. They stick really, really well, so I don't think we need to worry too much. Oh, and something I should mention too, is we've heard that with the new catalog, just like in every industry, um, Stampin' Up! has had to raise prices. Um, they put it off as long as they could. They're very kind that way, and they do subsidize our shipping, which is why it is so low for orders. Um, it would be much higher if they didn't. Um, but they had to put it up, finally, uh, all the prices for so many different things. So that'll include a lot of the basics, like inks and cardstocks and pattern papers, all kinds of stuff, including adhesives, too. So if you want to get in at current prices, it would be good to place your order as soon as you can so that you can make sure you get these items before the prices go up in May. So that's just a little public service announcement because uh, they told that to us just recently. So here is the ribbon we're going to use. It's black and white gingham ribbon. And I really like this ribbon. It's so handsome. Look at that. I've used it on many projects that are completely different from each other because it's such a versatile one. The black and white just seems to go with so many different things. And it can be used to kind of create a different look almost every time, depending on what your project is. So I really like it. I think it's a really cute ribbon. Okay, so there is our ribbon. All cut nicely. Let's cut that one off. A little stray edge there. Okay, so I want them even. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I had the little white and gray piece at the end. So that should be about even. Okay, that's very convenient too. I find sometimes it's hard to see if your ribbon ends are even with each other. This one, you can count the little pieces. So <laughs> it makes it way easier to decide if your ribbon is actually equal on both sides. There, I'm just going to cut that little piece off. And we will adhere that just to the edge of that label. Okay, what I'm going to use to do that is a mini glue dot. And these are some of the adhesives I like so much. You get 300 of them for $7.25. And they may well go up because we've heard that adhesives are going up as well with the new catalog. So make sure you get your mini glue dots and your um, Stampin' Dimensionals, you get 300 of these for $6 as it stands, but they may well be going up as, as well in May. Okay, so we've got that part done. So we have one more thing to put on. You can see I have these little sequins here. I just decided to use something a little different, and I like the silver shine that they provide. It seemed to go really well with the black and white theme. So I'm going to just grab those. The ones I'm using are called Sparkle and Shine Sequins Assortment. So you can see they come with all kinds of different little things. I'm just going to tap them down so that they don't all fall out when I open. 
well, one fell out, but that's okay. We need that one. <laughs> so that's fine. Okay, there's one. And I need another one. So let's see if we can get them out here. And I'm going to show you a tool that I like to use to pick these little guys up. So I'm just using the little bit of humidity on my finger to pick up the ones I want. So these are the little silver ones. And I just want five of them, if I can get that one off. Let's see if we can. There we go. But you can see it's got these kind of iridescent sequins as well. And it's got these little stars. And I believe there's a few other little things there as well. There's a, a raised dot that's really cute in there as well. So these are a nice thing. So we think of them usually as making shaker cards, but you can actually just stick them onto your cards too. They can be a little teeny bit fussy, but if you have the right tool, that does make a big difference. So let's get our multi-purpose liquid glue. I'm just going to use the fine tip. The broad tip is this one. I'll show you in case you haven't seen. So there's a broad tip there that you could use to put on bigger things. But we're just going to put on these little teeny sequins. So we're going to use this very fine tip. Okay. And if it does get dried up on the end, you just kind of grab it and pull off the excess glue. And it kind of gums up really quickly. Um, and it's very easy to clean out. So uh, I found that to be very beneficial. All right. So I'm just going to get this going to make sure that I can get little dots. Okay, that's good, it's working. So I'm gonna make my little dots. There's a little dot there. Another little dot there. Another little dot over there. And I'm gonna use this tool called Take Your Pick Tool. It has a sharp end over here for poking out little pieces of dies. And then it has this putty end over here to pick up little things like these embellishments. So let's see if we can make that work for us today. And then I'm just gonna use my fingernail, just the tip to make sure that it goes down in the place that I want. So like I said, this is the fussiest bit of the whole card and you could omit these but the good thing about sequins is they're very cost effective so that sequin pack that i showed you you get i'm not sure if they say where did they say yes they do there look you get a thousand of them <laughs> so you get a thousand of them when you buy a pack like this and you can use them practically forever if you just put them on cards like this oh here's one that wanted to join as well there we go um, so they're very cost effective if you're looking for something that's not expensive. Um, they are definitely a good way to go. There, I think you'll be able to see the glue on this one a little easier. Um, because it's on the black background. And I'm just going to pick these up again with the little tool. And put them down. And I just put my fingernail on the edge to make sure that it goes where I want. Okay, so that is how you make this card. It's really not hard. You just need a few of the tools to make it work. And then these sequins kind of really bring it all together, I find. So thanks again for joining me for my project today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to look for me on the internet and find more projects, go to www.juliescraftaddict.com. If you'd like to shop, you can use my host code and you will get uh, as a thank you my card of the month and a tutorial bundle as well. And uh, there are also some classes coming up and those are also available at my website, juliescraftaddict.com. And I'll have all this same information available here, right in this post um, by 1 p.m. Atlantic today, um, along with the replay from the video. Okay, and I'll have the instructions and the supply list for the project as well, including measurements, so you'll be able to find that too. So thanks again for coming today, and I hope you have a wonderfully crafty week. Bye for now.